today I thought we could talk a little bit about circles because they have some important properties that we should know about. So the first thing is we know the area of a circle is pi times r squared. So this is important because if we know this and we can remember that as the radius gets bigger, the area gets bigger because they're directly related. Another important thing is the circumference of a circle. The circumference of a circle is just the perimeter. That's just the name for the perimeter of the circle. So it goes all the way around. One more thing is chords. So chords are just a line that pass through a circle anywhere but through the center. So they could pass in any direction as long as they touch the sides of the circumference, but they don't go through the center because that would be the diameter. One thing about chords is if they're congruent, then they're the same distance from the center of a circle. And that just means that if you have two, if they're the exact same length, then they're going to be the same distance from that center. Congruent just means the same. But if they're different lengths, then they're going to be different lengths from the center. And you can see in the picture how the purple and the green chords look pretty much the same length. But you can see in the second picture how they're definitely not the same length. But in the second picture, you can see that they're, one is farther apart from the other. The green is farther apart from the center than the purple one. If we have two chords intersecting in a circle, that means that the two segments are, the product of them is going to be equal to the product of the other two segments. So you can see in the blue and the uh, orange circles, you have, um, a and B, if you multiply those two lengths, let's say they're one and three, and C and D are gonna be equal to that product. And the same with the orange one. So let's say C and D, C is two and D is one maybe. So two times one is two, and A and B is gonna equal two also when we multiply those two lengths together. And as long as two chords intersect anywhere in a circle, that's gonna be true. So. We don't really need to prove that, but we can just remember that that's always going to be true. And one more thing has to do with an inscribed quadrilateral. So when we inscribe something, we just put it in something else. So it just fits right into that circle. And a quadrilateral is just a four-sided shape. So we have this um, four-sided, sort of like a trapezoid inside the circle. And the opposite angles in that are going to equal 180 degrees. So here we can see A and C equal 180, and B and D equal 180. So that's also called supplementary. When two angles equal 180 degrees, that's called supplementary. And we can prove that, but we don't really need to also. One more thing are arcs. So arc in a circle is just a part of the circumference. So it's like a piece of pie or a pizza slice. It's just a part of that circle and they have an angle measure and a side length. So we can figure out other things about the circle if we know things about the arc. So let's look at this example. We have 40 degrees is the angle measure and we have the radius of the circle. So let's figure out what AB is, how long that is. So we can set up a ratio because we know the formula for circumference is 2 pi r. So let's say AB over 2 pi r equals 40 degrees over 360 because that's how many degrees are in a whole circle. So we can plug in the radius because we know it's 6 inches. So let's say AB over 2 pi times 6 equals 40. Over, 106, over 360. And now we can just cross multiply to figure out what AB is. So we cross multiply and AB equals about 4.2 inches. So we figured out the length, but what about if we want to figure out the degree measure? Let's figure out how to do another kind of ratio. We just set it up the same way in this next example. And we want to say S, because that's the length of the arc, over 2 pi r equals theta, this missing angle, over 360. So now we cross multiply again, same thing. 
S times 360 equals theta times 2 pi r. Now we divide by 2 pi r to get theta by itself. And we figure out that theta equals about 76 degrees. So we can figure out any kind of measure if, as long as we have a radius and an angle or the arc length and the radius.